Okay, right. Okay. Um, good afternoon, everyone. Um, we'd like to welcome you to this memorial tribute to Comrade Paul David. Um, as you all know, Comrade Paul passed away on the 13th of August on Thursday, and uh, due to the uh, COVID pandemic regulations, um, had a very, very private funeral, and we were unable to host a public tribute to him as we would have all liked to. Nevertheless, um, comrades got together and set up the Paul David Memorial Committee, and we decided to organize a virtual memorial tribute to Comrade Paul, which is why we are all here today. Um, the tribute has been uh, organized at short notice, so you will forgive us if there are any shortcomings. However, we are uh, very, very uh, appreciative of the support and the um, assistance that has been given to us in the organizing of the tribute. Um, comrades, as you know, Comrade Paul came from a large family and uh, he, was, he had siblings that predeceased him, Ramesh David, Ronnie David, Phyllis Naidu, John David, and uh, Matron Regina Miraj. His surviving siblings are Vasi Singh, Ben David, and Sinti Kurno, not to mention his daughters, Jolene, Jasmine, and Lisa, as well as his sons-in-law and his grandchildren. So um, there is a large family that Paul came from. And to pay tribute on behalf of the family, let me call upon Paul's, one of Paul's granddaughters, Caitlin, um, to speak on behalf of the family. Thank you, Auntie Nagy. Comrade, magistrate, mentor, sponsor, friend. Yes, indeed, a friend to all. Good afternoon, everyone. For those of you who don't know me, I'm Caitlin, Paul's eldest granddaughter. 
As grief stricken as I find myself during this time, I speak before you a very proud granddaughter. We never thought a human being could have been this motivational or inspiring, yet we have had the privilege of having such a human being amongst us who had the years of experience and mountainous knowledge. Many speak about knowing or working with him. We are grateful to have had the opportunities to learn from him at any given chance. He has taught us to persevere, work hard and keep going. He has taught us to grow through our hurdles rather than stumble upon them. Our mentor, our, mentor, our motivation, our hero, but most importantly, our father and grandfather. He had so much to give and has given us so much. Yes, Papa, those pearls you've spoken about, you've left us with them and we'll treasure them through all eternity. Over these past few days, I've heard people speak and I've read Paul Day with the successful lawyer, Paul Day with the struggle veteran, Paul Day with the political activist, Paul Day with a great man. At the base of all this, it's Paul Day with the phenomenal human being. We are in awe to hear people speak of you and how you've touched their lives. He was a living example of how one should live their life, always maintaining the perfect balance. Through all his hardships and great successes, he remained humble. He never cared for material wealth. His wealth is what he could give people, how he could better people and the wealth of knowledge he had. The name Paul David seldom leaves a bitter taste in one's mouth. The name Paul David leaves footprints on our hearts and a smile on our face that we can carry for all the days of our lives. There with us, which means servant of the divine, has truly lived up to his namesake, a man for the people who has given his all to the people and the community. Our father and grandfather was a son of the soil. His selfless nature and the way in which he lived his life encourages us not to seek approval of others nor crave for attention. He was much more than a father or grandfather. He was a role model. He had the wit of a clown. There was never a dull moment around him. Thank you, Papa. Thank you for to love not hate, to look for the good in everyone and everything. One lesson that sticks with me is that you cannot let go with a clenched fist. You've shown us that you have to let go, be peaceful, not hold grudges. He was a very special, warm, and gentle person. Each one of us live or much rather aim to live and embody the ways of the great Paul David, a man of humility and honor. I hope your light continues to shine and your name echoes into all eternity. Fly high, a valiant soldier. Thank you, Caitlin, um, for that very moving tribute. It's clear that Paul was much loved by his family and his grandchildren. Um, we have with us a message um, from the president of the country, President Ramaphosa. I'll just read it out. President Cyril Ramaphosa has expressed his heartfelt condolences on the passing of anti-apartheid activist Paul David, who passed away on th Thursday, 13th August, 2020, at the age of 79. The president's thoughts are with the David family and the extensive network of friends and activists of the late veteran. David was an anti-apartheid activist and member of the Natal Indian Congress, as well as the United Democratic Front. During his university days, he served on the Student Representative Council of the University of Natal alongside Steve Bantu Biko. He was also involved in the Release Mandela campaign. He was also part of the Consulate Six a group of activists who were sheltered by the British consulate in Durban in 1984 while the police were searching for the group. President Ramaphosa said, I quote, the passing of Paul David as the last member 
of the Consulate 6 is a great loss to our country, and especially to the people of KwaZulu-Natal, alongside whom he exerted himself in the trenches of the struggle." Unquote. Um, our next speaker, whom I will hand over to, is Albertina Lutuli, a stalwart herself of the struggle and a friend of Comrade Paul. Albertina. It's a sad day for all of us, you know. I wish I could raise my, my fist up and say Amanda, but you know, it's a day where we've lost a, a great fighter for freedom for all South Africans here and also for the future generations to come. My condolences go to the family of Paul. They have lost their beloved prize. I just listened to uh, the young lady there. And really, I do want to say to you, I'll emphasize that you have lost a beloved prize, P-R-I-Z-E. I know Paul from earlier days as the brother of Phyllis Naidu from the University of Natal. We called it Sastri College. In inverted commas, I would say it was sort of like a campus perhaps. I was at medical school in Devon myself. And <clears throat> we fought the same battles against a government that legislate, legislated a racially, a racially discriminatory education system. Now, Phyllis, uh, the sister was very much, you know, in front in matters like that, including Paul. I left South Africa with my family in 1974 exile. One of the critical reasons was the same as experienced by Paul and other cadres about uh, what happened at the British consulate in Durban, you know. And I think it was the policy of the consulate at that time. And here, my, hus my husband, who's late now, Pascal Ngakane, was also uh, in a similar situation where running away from the uh, you know from the hard the, the hard time that he was having at that particular time <laughs> here to escape <laughs> arrest and uh, he ran to the uh, British um, uh, you know consulate in Devon and had to vacate uh, the next morning because uh, they couldn't keep him there so that contributed a, a, a long way. Uh, to making us feel that now, as a family, that South Africa was no longer a place to live in for some of us, and particularly seeing the um, umpumela waloko, you know, the symptoms in the children who were uh, trying to pursue a normal education. Well, that even if, even if it was not exactly normal, but. The, 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 the situation was such that now they couldn't even uh, concentrate in class. So <clears throat> we had to leave. We have a hero here. <clears throat> um, after I returned from exile in 1991, I worked with Paul together with other comrades. I was in the UK and, 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 and uh, you know, in exile, and then Zimbabwe and uh, Lesotho, and then came back home. I returned from exile in 1991. I worked with Paul together with other comrades, advancing the doctrine of the ENC in Guadalajara, area 
as well as beyond. Yeah. The, and it's, it's the, 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 I'm talking here about the doctrine of the ANC. The doctrine of the ANC was the same then as the Indian Congress and the Alliance as a whole. You know, the Alliance had the ANC, Indian Congress, Congress of Democrats, and the Congress of the People. I visited him during his prolonged illness and confinement to bed. It was said to learn that he actually was confined to bed 24 hours a day. He just couldn't get out of bed or do anything. I was, you know, I was really torn apart. I mean, that was Paul who should have been given longer perhaps to live and do the good work. I visited him, seeing him on my first visit, my own feelings predominated. I felt that he didn't deserve to be in that situation. A subsequent visit actually inspired me. He was facially, facially on the face, more illuminated and trying to sit up to the side of the bed. He succeeded. I was convinced he is a comrade who is a fighter for what, whatever the circumstances uh, that confront him. And that also he had the strong will in him to live. We have a hero who fought for a better life for South Africa as a whole. May his soul rest in peace. I am sure he is resting in peace and celebrating a new freedom with the many others like him who have passed on, who have passed on. And uh, there are many heroes, comrades, who are passing on and uh, he won't be lonely where he is going. With those words, I want to finish by saying, may his soul rest in peace. And I know that he is resting in peace. Thanks, Comrade Albertina, uh, for those moving words. Um, comrades, there's a message from the uh, Premier of KwaZulu-Natal, as well as the, who is also the chairperson of the African National Congress in the province. He says, on behalf of the provincial government and the ANC in KwaZulu-Natal, I convey deepest sympathies and condolences to the family, friends, and comrades of Paul David. Paul David was one of our leaders in the most difficult periods of our struggle for a liberated South Africa. As young people at that time, we were constantly inspired, conscientized, and mobilized by an exceptional leadership corps. Comrade Paul David was one of those leaders who will be revered forever. Then he goes on to say, I was pleased to be able to briefly meet some members of the family on Friday and convey my condolences, but it was too brief a visit to adequately reflect on the tremendous contribution that Comrade Paul David made to our struggle and country. He then refers to sharing the same table at platform on the occasion of the 125th anniversary of the Natal Union Congress. And he says, in his address, Comrade Paul was highly critical of the weaknesses displayed by our movement and reflected on several challenges that we as a movement and democratic government must seek to overcome. Rest assured, Comrade Paul, that we do listen and take to heart the criticism that comes from veterans of your caliber because there is never any doubt about your total and absolute commitment to equ equity, justice, and love of all humanity. We commit again to honor you and all past great leaders to spare no effort in building a truly national democratic society, united, democratic, non-racial, non-sexist, and prosperous. Hamagashle, Comrade Paul, we will not forget. Our next speaker, comrades, is a friend of the family, Manik Kiston. Thanks, Maggie, for facilitating. And um, thanks for, to the committee for inviting me to share. Um, it's indeed a privilege to talk about a great man. Uh, I met Paul some 40 years ago uh, as a young student activist and also from the same community 
And Paul immediately made an impact on young activists like ourselves. Um, you know, when a leader leads by example in all aspects of his life, he then motivates others to commit to similar principles. And uh, as young activists, by him leading by example, allowed us to follow in his footsteps and the leaders before him, to make and to commit to the freedom of all South Africans and also all peoples of the world. So I thank Paul for that, for redirecting my life, uh, to make my life more meaningful, to make an impact rather than selfishly focusing as a human being on one's own life to look at how we can make an impact on the greater good. Now it'd be remiss of me uh, because I've been privileged enough to be able to share on a platform like this that many, many tens of thousands of activists and members of, of our communities and his family are not on this kind of platform to pay tribute. So I have some tributes briefly that I'd like to share from some of the comrades, but I'll start with Paul's family member and brother, Ben David. I quote from Ben David. Dev, as he was known in the family, was a binding force amongst us. He kept the family together. We looked up to him. He was intelligent and perceptive to everything around him. He took an intense interest in every member of the family. Phyllis's daughter, Sukti's son, Buck, and Louis see Dev's as their mentor. He would play games with them and he would also engage them in serious debate over topical issues. Dev paid tribute to our father, Simon David. He said that Simon David was a giant among intellectuals. I believe that Dev was a chip of the old block. I have, I'd like to read from comrade Eddie Naidu. It says, comrade Paul is a committed, dedicated and faithful servant of the people without any gratitude for the sacrifices he made. I'd like to read something from Comrade Siva Naidu, who was formerly from Tonga to now in Johannesburg. He says, looking, sorry, one thing that struck me which needs a mention is that Paul has a, has a special affinity towards the youth. He stands out amongst the Nick leaders of that time, and he developed a close bond with the youth leaders in Tonga, Verlum, Chatsworth, Phoenix, and Mirbank. He valued their participation in the struggle and nurtured them. He shaped their thinking and political consciousness in, in a manifold of ways. Undoubtedly, he made a huge impact, a life well lived. Just one more from Subri, journalist Subri. He says, I came to know Paul very closely when he was a lawyer in Verulam and when I was a young journalist at the Daily News in Durban since the early 1970s. He was committed to the struggle for a non-racial and democratic South Africa, and he remained to this cause until his passing. He never allowed himself to be sidetracked from uplifting the lives of the poor and the marginalized. One hopes that the new generation that has come in now will learn something at least from the likes of Paul David. It's a sad commentary that many of the people in positions of power have not learned anything from our leaders like Paul. It's also sad that our new government have not said too much about his, about his passing. That's from Subri. For myself, um, very simply, you know, Paul maintained the revolutionary principles and his commitment to a free, a just society in South Africa until his dying day. He did not comprise it, I mean, did not compromise it for selfish gain that is endemic within our society and especially within our political society. And I think the best way to honor him is to look at a renewal and get back to the revolutionary principles that we learned from leaders like Paul, not only in talk, but in practice, who gave everything, made tremendous sacrifices. Their families sacrificed in the process, but never gave up to the concept of greed 
that is contaminating our society. So as far as time does not permit, so I say to myself and to many of the comrades that we need to get back to the fundamental revolutionary principles. And it starts with honesty. It starts with the truth. It starts with democracy, freedom, political freedom and economic freedom for all our people. So I say the Aluta continue in the name of Paul David. Thank you. Thank you, Manik. Um, we have a message from the um, MJ Naidu family. Um, MJ Naidu was one of those who was at the consulate with Paul. And it says, it is with great sadness that we learned of the passing of Paul David. On behalf of the family of MJ Naidu, we send our deepest con condolences to Paul's family and friends and the numerous activists that organized and campaigned with him. We mourn with you and celebrate the extraordinary life of this courageous, committed activist to tirelessly fight to obtain a better South Africa for all of us. We are grateful to have the honor of knowing him. His legacy will live on in our hearts and it's signed by the entire family. Thank you very much. Our next speaker um, is John Samuel. Let me just say that they were a band of, of very, very um, good-hearted people in Stanger who assisted Paul um, on a daily basis with his various needs and requirements and accompanied him. And um, John is part of that group and is speaking um, as a friend and uh, the Stanger group. To um, Paul and his many, many friends and comrades, yeah, Mom. I first met Paul when we were in high school, and it was at an inter-school debate. And there are two things that struck me about Paul in our first meeting. First was the fact that even though he was in high school, he was still in shorts. And secondly, he had already at that young age, what I could best describe as an audaciousness. It struck me that um, it struck me that this was as, as young as he was, that this was a person who had no fear. And I think that was a characteristic that stayed with Paul throughout his life. Uh, first of all, this, this larger than life image, and secondly, the lack of fear. And, and that generated, in fact, an amazing courage. Uh, our friendship, which started uh, in high school, and it was really around common interests. Both Paul and I shared a passion for sport, for reading, and drama. And so there were many occasions that we spent hours and hours either reading or performing Shakespeare to each other. And this friendship continued um, because Paul and I went to the same university together. And uh, those were the days, in fact, when university education was segregated. And although we were at a fully fledged university, the University of Natal, they accommodated their so-called non-white students in a separate section. The heart of the university for us was the common room. This is really where I think most of us got our education. And it was the center because this is where political debate and discussion happened. And Paul was quite often at the center of this. The remarkable thing about that time was that even though there were different political tendencies, the overall sense of comradeship and friendship 
uh, was very strong. We were a small community and we related and got on extremely well. I think at a fairly early age in his political career, Paul had developed a sense of what I would call organizing. Uh, Paul intuitively understood the importance of organizing, even at that young age. And so his, his involvement in politics came from a deep sense that you had to have the people with you. And to his credit, this characteristic was one that enabled him, in fact, in the tough days of the 80s to organize, probably on an unprecedented scale, in opposition to apartheid and the various institutions of apartheid. And as the Italian revolutionary Gramsci says, that there are three characteristics that an organic intellectual has. The first is he's a constructor, he makes things. The second, organizer. And the third, persuader. And Paul's political involvement, in fact, was marked in a very strong way by those three qualities. Um, at significant historical moments, uh, the emergence of individuals, in fact, is quite critical. And this is, the struggle in South Africa was no different in that sense. And Paul's role in the 80s was uh, quite astounding, in fact. He worked nonstop and the fact that we got in a relatively short period of time to the 90s and then the negotiations was due in no small measure to the acts of people like Paul, eventually bringing the apartheid government round to the table. Um, more recently, Paul and I, um, whenever we met, uh, talked about the current challenges that this country faces. And I was always struck, in fact, by Paul's deep sense and understanding of the challenges. I think like a lot of people, the sense of disappointment and, and the fact that we were still far from the ideals that were established in the long history of the ANC was something that generated enormous unhappiness. Um, and I think the other aspect about this is that Paul also understood and was very, very clear about this, that one should never underestimate the achievements of 1994. That historically, the fact that we got to where we did in 94 had to be recognized and not rubbished just simply because of the challenges we face today. Um, and, and it is in, the, in this context, in fact, that I raised with him uh, the question of how was it possible? What were the factors? that shaped our current development? How did we get to where we got to? How was it possible for an organization that had occupied the moral high ground for such a long time for it to face the kind of challenges that we face as a country today? 
Um, we had no answers to this question. Uh, and, and I think that part of the friendship was on that basis that uh, we were not political enemies. We were, in fact, on the same side. And when I think about Paul's achievements, I'm saddened by the fact that his voice in history has not been heard. I think this historical wrong must be corrected. That Paul has to be remembered more than just simply one of the six in the consulate affair. That there was a consistent committed, passionate activist, that he played a significant role in the emergence and the development of democratic South Africa. Finally, let me say that we all, in, in some way or the other, need to address ourselves to this question. And part, I think, of the obligation that rests on us is in fact to place Paul squarely in the middle of history of South Africa. Thank you. Thank you very, very much, uh, John, for those words. Um, we have a message from Judge Thamba Pillay who served with Paul um, on the um, Natal Indian Congress executive and uh, was also involved with him in various other sectors. Um, and he says, and I'm quoting from uh, an excerpt, I do not want to repeat all that you are likely to hear from the speakers lined up to pay tribute to Paul, and would, but would confine myself to a, Paul, to a side of Paul, which in all likelihood is overlooked or unacknowledged. In the 50s and early 60s, we had in the NIC executive one Gopalal Harbans. Those from Tonga will recall that name with great pride. Apart from his sterling contribution to the struggle, Harbans, a close friend and confidant of Chief Albert Lutuli, was the choice as master of ceremonies or chairperson of all NIC meetings and conferences, which he executed with aplomb. Paul fitted and inherited that role. And who can forget Paul's handling of meetings and conferences, which he managed firmly, but always with that sense of humor and ready smile, which characterized his life, even in times of adversity. Rest in peace, you so richly deserve, my friend, Judge Tamba Pole. Our next speaker is, um, you know, as, as has been already stated here, Paul interacted across a range of organizations and indeed provinces. And our next speaker is uh, Comrade Prema Naidu, who is a stalwart, a comrade from the Transvaal Indian Congress and the United Democratic Front, Comrade Prema. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Maggie. Maybe I just uh, thank the organizers for giving me this opportunity to pay tribute to the late Comrade Paul Davids. I speak on behalf of many comrades who knew uh, Comrade Paul very well in this part of the world, uh, who worked with Comrade Paul, and we sent our condolences to the family, comrades, and friends. I first met Comrade Paul in the late 60s in the offices of his sister, Comrade Phyllis Naidu. At the time, that was a very dark period in our lives. At the time, Comrade Phyllis's office was a hive of activity. As you will all be aware that there were many political prisoners on Robben Island and elsewhere, and Phyllis acted for many of those families in trying to get permission for them to see their loved ones in prison, trying to help many of the families 
who were left destitute out. So that was my first introduction to Comrade Paul at the offices. And he immediately struck me as being a man of immense intelligence, great wit, had a good sense of humor, and his commitment to the struggle for a non-racial, non-sexist, and democratic South Africa. Thereafter, we got to know Paul, and Paul, whenever he made a trip to Johannesburg, he, he lived and he came and he lived at our home in Johannesburg in Dornfontein. So we got to know Paul quite well. I remember very clearly when Paul, those days, you must understand, comrades, that there were no hotels or fancy lodges that we could stay. So people stayed with us in their homes. So Paul, I remember very clearly said to me that uh, I'll make my own bed. I will wash my own underwear. This is the values which my father instilled in me. And I think those were the values and commitment that lived with Paul throughout his life. Paul once came to Johannesburg with the Natal cricket team. And the enthusiasm that he showed for non-racial sport was unbelievable. He really believed in non-racial sport and played a major role in, uh, in developing that. Later on, when we revived the, the Transvaal Indian Congress year, we had many meetings, joint meeting between the Transvaal Indian Congress and the Natal Indian Congress. We used to meet halfway in, Natal, in Lady Smith, Newcastle at times. And once we even met at Paul David's brother's house in Dundee. And we got to begin to know Paul and his commitment and his contribution to the liberation struggle as an attorney, as a political activist, as a member of the Natal Indian Congress, the United Democratic Front was immense. And throughout his life, he began to play a role where he took part in the, in the struggle. During the 1980 school boycott, and many of the comrades here will remember, there was countrywide arrest. And among the people arrested was Comrade Paul. And they were held at Modaby prison here in the eastern part of Johannesburg. It was one of my tasks was to take food on a Sunday morning to Modaby prison so that some of our comrades uh, could have a good home cooked meal. So this is some of my fondest memories of Comrade Paul. Comrade Paul became politically aware at a very early age. Comrades, his father uh, instilled in him that never to discriminate against anybody. His elder sister Phyllis, who was quite deeply involved in the struggle, instilled the anti apartheidness in him. And Comrade Paul, with his brother in law, MD Naidu, worked tirelessly for the liberation in this country. I believe Paul joined the Natal Indian Congress at the age of 17. Now that's a very young age for somebody to get politically involved. In 1971, Comrade Paul joined other comrades like Mewa Ram Gobin in and Ila Gandhi in reviving the Natal Indian Congress. He was elected secretary in 1979 and he was also involved in the release Mandela campaign. Now, all these organizations, we had the Transvaal Indian Congress here in Johannesburg. We had the Release Mandela Committee and we interacted with Paul very closely on all these campaigns. I remember when the conference took place of the Natal Indian Congress, Mewa couldn't attend because he was banned. And I hope a lot of the younger generation can appreciate some of the difficulties that the comrades had gone through. Soon after his banning order expired, obviously Mewa began to take an active interest again in the Natal Indian Congress and worked with people. And if you remember when Winnie was banished to Brantford, it was Mewa 
George Superasad, Subri Governor, and Paul David, who went to Brantford to go and see uh, Winnie and try and find out from her what she actually needed. Uh, because Brantford, I myself went to Brantford to go and see Winnie. It was a desolate place at the time. There was nothing there. And Winnie really appreciated these visits from some of the Congress, from some of the comrades. During our campaigns around the tricaminal parliament, we worked very closely with the comrades from Natal. We worked closely, and as people know that we had a very, very successful boycott of the tricameral parliament. And Paul played a major role in those campaigns. We also remember that Paul being among the 16 United Democratic and Congress leaders who were charged for treason in Peter Maritzburg High Court with people like Mewa Ramgoban, Ngobo, Achigumere, Curtis Nkondo, Cesar Njigilani, Aubrey McQuena, Sam Kikini, MJ Naidu, Albertina Sasulu, Isub Jasad, Kasim Saluji. These were the people who were charged for high treason. Now, high treason was a very serious charge. It carried the death penalty. But these comrades went through and eventually they were quitted. I mean, uh, I remember visiting comrade Paul in his offices in Stanger. And what struck me when I got to his office, his office was full of people. These were people who were poor, desperate. They had one problem or the other, and they were desperately looking for help. And Paul opened his office, and he was helping many of these people with their problems. The last time I spoke to Paul was probably about two years ago. Paul called me and he asked me, how did we sort out the problem in Johannesburg when the service delivery wasn't up to standard? He was concerned that in our present government, in KZN and many others, that service delivery was not up to standard. And how do we manage to begin to take this issue up? Paul and I had a long discussion on the matter and we changed ideas. I'm not too sure whether anything has ever come off it and whether service delivery to people has ever improved in the, Natal, in the Durban uh, South Coast. As many of the other speakers have pointed out, Paul was deeply disappointed at what is happening in our country. The nepotism, the corruption, and comrades, we need to begin to fight the scourge of corruption. The time has come for us to begin to take a stand. We need to weed out corruption in the memory of all our great leaders who gave their lives in the fight for this democracy that we have today. With those few words from the Naidu family in Johannesburg, who Paul interacted with almost every member of our family, we send our deepest condolences to the family, to comrades and friends. Thank you very much for according me this opportunity to say a few words. Thank you very much, Prema. Um, and that's from another family uh, with, uh, rooted in the struggle. Um, comrades, as you know, um, Paul supported um, active citizenry and uh, was uh, very much in support of the formation of the active citizens movement. I have here a message um, from the chairperson Ben Madoke on behalf of the active citizens movement. And it says, to Lisa, Jolene, Jasmine and the extended David family, please accept the sincere condolences of the executive and members of the active citizens movement at this sad time. And then I'm going to just read an excerpt. Paul David lived his life with integrity, humility and commitment to the service of the community. His legacy shall live on in the various civic and political organizations he played an active role in and will be embedded in the history of South Africa's liberation struggle. So that's from the Active Citizens Movement. Um, I now call upon somebody who doesn't require too much introduction, if any at all, Comrade Ila Gandhi, who was a comrade of, of Paul's in the Natal Indian Congress, the UDF, as well as um, uh, a friend from Verlo, Comrade Ila. 
Thank you, Comrade Maggie. It is with great sadness that I pay tribute today to a very dear friend, a comrade, a neighbor, son of the soil, a kindred spirit, and a confidant. I met Paul at the university in the late 50s, and what immediately struck me was Paul's most unique characteristic, his jolly personality. There was never a time when he wouldn't have a joke to tell. When we see the many photographs of Paul smiling, unlike many of us, he wasn't putting on a smile for the camera. He was just his normal self. Paul was a stalwart who in many ways was able to relate to all. Race, class, gender, age made absolutely no difference in his relationships. His friendship and warmth surpassed all these artificial boundaries. The first takeaway from his illustrious life is this quality of non-racism, which is something we need to work on. It's one of the things that we need to take away. I remember in Verlum, we worked on many campaigns together and at our meetings of the Verlum Housing Action Committee and activists forum, he would listen carefully to what people were saying. But at the end, he would not hesitate to say exactly what he thought of what we were saying. And yet, we didn't feel hurt, insulted, or belittled. We just realized that we had made a mistake. Because of that warm personality, he was able to tell you many truths to your face and get away with it. This is the second takeaway. Speak your mind, cherish honesty at all times, no matter what. And I think that that's an important takeaway that we need to learn. His warm and generous personality endeared him to all. The young activists, not just in Berlin, but all the youth would naturally gravitate towards him. Even when Paul was not quite well and probably in pain because of the injury to his eyes, he didn't complain and never lost his laughter, no matter how ac acute his pain was. He had an amazing abil ability to trivialize his own pain. He had a zest for life and was always occupied with something interesting and new. Although he was a lawyer, I believe he would have made a wonderful teacher. He had an amazing way of explaining issues and sharing knowledge, telling stories that would hit most that would hit home a point. He was the best facilitator, moderator, program director, or MC of meetings I have come across. He had a natural rapport with the audience and an amazing command of the English language. He was never at loss for words. This is the third takeaway, his humility, empathy, and understanding above self-centeredness. He had a sharp mind, but would never impose his ideas on others. Instead, he would listen carefully to what was being said. Ask the opinion of the youngest amongst the group. Everyone felt important in his company. That is the fourth takeaway. Value for all quest, uh, opinions, even of the youngest person. 
and uh, remembering that every opinion matters because a well understood and a well thought out plan is the best way to organize. This is very important for all of us to remember. There are many takeaways, but time does not permit. So let me stop here with the final message. As difficult as it will surely be, my family and I pray that God gives Lisa, Jolene, and Jasmine and their families and the rest of the family and friends of Paul David the strength to accept and bear this great loss. Our solidarity and love are with you, the family of Paul David. Keep smiling. Life is beautiful no matter what. That is the lesson that Paul has left with us. His spirit lives on. Go well, dear friend. We will certainly cherish your memory. Thank you. Thanks, Ila. Um, very, very heartfelt words there. Um, comrades, you know, there have been messages streaming in from a range of organizations showing the, the support and respect that Paul engendered. And um, I'm forced to actually be, you know, a bit of a, a hatchet person here and, and, and butcher these messages and just extract bits of them. So you will bear with me, please, because we are constrained uh, by time. We have a message here from the South African Muslim Network um, the chairperson, Dr. Faisal Suleiman, who says, our democratic freedoms are due to the great sacrifices made by our activists and will never be forgiven, forgotten. We convey our sincere condolences to the family, friends, and comrades of Devdas Paul David and to South Africans at large. Um, that's a message from the South African Muslim Network. Um, what we have next um, is a um, short clip by another uh, veteran and somebody who worked with Paul in the Natal Indian Congress, uh, Comrade Swaminathan Gandhi. Thank you very much, Swami. Um, I'm sure some, uh, we, we heard some of it. Um, the reception wasn't very good. The weather isn't very good as well. So please bear with us, comrades. Um, our next speaker, but Swami's uh, message is a very relevant one. And I'm sure uh, we will be posting these things um, on, on websites. Um, our next speaker is a comrade uh, who worked with Paul in the sports movement. That wasn't only where they worked together, but um, we've actually asked him to cover this aspect, and this is Krish Kavanda. Krish? Uh, thank you very much, Maggie, and I'm glad you said I didn't work only in the area of sport with Paul, because um, there's a lot that needs to be said, 
uh, although it was touched on briefly by some of the others. But let me first express my deepest condolences to Lisa, Jolene, Jasmine, and the family from my family, Sangri, our children, Indira and Ravi, who shared many moments in our respective homes uh, with uh, when Ursula was around as well. And those are uh, very memorable and we cherish those memories. I want to just say that um, as some of the speakers have said, Paul was a multifaceted person. And although I'm supposed to focus a little bit on sport, but we have to pay tribute to the work he did as a lawyer. And in this regard, I extend condolences to the family from the Legal Practice Council of South Africa, representing all the lawyers in this country and many colleagues in this province as well, who shared a very close relationship with Paul and respected him very highly. Paul was a brilliant lawyer with a sharp wit and an excellent mind in court. He was brave. He did not tolerate racism from magistrates and prosecutors, and he stood up for, for his clients and won their hearts and their support and confidence. And this is why they kept him very busy. And as one of the speakers said, he was there for the poorest of the poor as well. And he served the legal profession in the best of the noble traditions that it doesn't have. But this was Paul and he gave the legal profession a good name. He was also central as an activist, not just a lawyer. He helped to mobilize and organize lawyers into formations and groups that supplemented our liberation struggle. He was central in the formation of the Democratic Lawyers Association in Durban, which was one of the first of the organized lawyers during those repressive year, years in the 70s where organization was at its lowest and lawyers began to organize themselves as a voice to represent the profession and to speak on behalf of the people in respect of the unjust laws. He also helped in the formation of the National Association of Democratic Lawyers, which brought together all the legal formations in the country at its launch in 1987. And there he worked alongside people like Pius Langa, Dalla Omar, and some of the best lawyers from around the countries, from the country who gathered in Durban and who formed this organization. I must also mention people like Dikhang Mosaneke and Dumisa and Sebesa and others who were there. And Paul was always highly respected for the organizational work that he did in mobilizing lawyers along the North Coast, in elsewhere, in the other parts of the province as well, to stand together and to be organized. And this was central to his whole character and his being. I must also add that his love for literature, as John Samuel mentioned, for poetry, art, and theater, did not just go at the level of leaving it at the books. He worked very closely with people like Strini Mudley and those of us who were also involved in what we call those days the underground theater. He helped to promote this. He took our theater council of Natal as it was called Tekon under Strini Mudley and Sam Mudley and others and and facilitated performances of poetry, liberation poetry, theater in the North Coast at Ngoya University and around Stanga and in those areas and brought the kind of theater that hardly reached most parts of this province to people who never saw these things. So let me there's so much to say in that regard, but I will just move on to his involvement in sport. And as we have heard, Paul was a talented and a brilliant sportsman in his own right. He just didn't get involved in sport because it was important 
from a political or struggle perspective came from his natural ability and his move towards being involved in transforming and opposing apartheid sport. And that was one of the things about Paul. He did everything with a purpose. He just, it was something that he had, he had a plan and he worked towards it. And th these were central to the reasons for his involvement in, in the uh, SACO struggle. It started with his um, leanings towards the support for Sandrock and the work that Sandrock was doing outside South Africa to isolate South African racist apartheid sport. And he worked alongside uh, people like Dennis Brutus and to, to also with working with the Sam Ramsamy of those days. I can't say the same about what Sam Ramsamy is doing in sport these days, but those days he was a great leader with Dennis Brutus and the work that Paul did in South Africa, he worked alongside, and I think these are names that we forgot and we must never ever allow that to happen as well. People like Emin Pata, Morgan Naidu, who helped to forge and create the South African Council of Sport with Hassan Hawa in Cape Town. And this work that Paul did allowed for the creation of a force in South Africa that was very central to hitting at the softest underbelly of the apartheid regime, which was their rugby, their sport, and their bright flays that went with everything that they looked forward to when the Springboks were playing, and it was their pride. But the Sacco sports struggle allowed Paul to play an important role. He helped to form the provincial arm of SACOS in that those days, and I would just keep referring to it as Natal. And he was central, he became the president of the Natal Council of Sport. And he helped to unite the various codes in this province to bring them to, to work on a platform that will unite the codes and help to bring them to understand what the non-racial struggle in sport was about. It wasn't just a question of getting together on a soccer or cricket field and just playing the sport. He had to, he drove it home to the participants of NACOS that there was much more to sport and we had to bring sport into the mainstream of the struggle. He worked alongside, again, important names like R.K. Naidu from football, Rama Reddy, Harry Hendricks from the high schools in PE, Reggie Feldman in Johannesburg, Ibrahim Patel from rugby, uh, Arnold, Arnold Stofile, who was also an important organizer of rugby in Kwasakele in the Eastern Cape. Frank van der Hoss, who was also president of uh, SACOS after uh, Hassan Hawa. And these were important names. And Paul was a great fighter for bringing the cause of an, a site, the, the, the type of struggle that we at that time in the Congress field had to introduce. Sackles at that time was dominated by a sector of the political movement that engaged in boycott. And the boycott strategy of the old non-European unity movement, which changed to the uh, new unity movement and their al allied organizations that came together created the kind of platform for themselves, which unfortunately did not quite take it towards spreading it in the line of any mass mobilization. Unfortunately, sport could not get organized in that manner. And it was very much 
a smaller arm of the liberation movement, but it was still a very effective one. But Paul did his best to introduce the idea of taking sport beyond the urban areas, beyond the so-called colored and Indian areas where Sakos was quite dominant and tried to take it into the township. There were many ideological battles in Sakos that Paul fought. And during those times, he actually was sacrificed, if I may say, when he was removed as a president of NACOS because of his influence in promoting the Congress charterist positions. And, uh, but that didn't stop him. He still went from there to organize many other areas of sport, even outside the NACOS program. This even led to his uh, assisting in the formation of the National Sports Congress, which was the successor, if I may say, to SACOS, which could not uh, relate to mass mobilization. And the National Sports Congress, together with the UDF and the ANC after 1990, took over the mantle of the sports struggle and controlled much of the changes that took place after 1990. Just a brief word about how Paul lost his eye. He was one of the founders of the Squash Rackets Federation. And it was a new sport in, in South Africa, difficult to play, difficult to organize and to set up. It was an expensive sport to get premises, to build squash courts, but Paul, being the sports person that he was, he put his heart and soul into it. He became adept at the sport and he was playing in a squash court on the North Coast uh, with somebody who wasn't as good as, sport, as Paul was, but Paul being the person that he was, never, it never troubled him to play with weaker players to promote them and help them. And Squash isn't easy. If you're not playing it properly, you can get injured. And in one of those, we'd say not so clever moves by his opponent, the squash record struck his eye and he lost his eye. And he gave up his eye, if one can say, for the struggle in sports. It wasn't an easy process. He almost lost his life in hospital because of the danger that the damage to his eye um, entailed and with blood pressure problems, but he survived it, he lost his eye, but nobody would say that he very often, not many people uh, realize that he lived so long, continued the struggle with just one eye, his legal profession, and his involvement in sport were absolutely undeterred. He was as solid as ever. And he was a person who gave so much of his body, his spirit and his life to ensure that we succeeded in all aspects of our life in our struggle for liberation. And sadly, our struggle for liberation in sport is still far from over, as we can see with how even in South Africa with our black majority, we have to talk about black lives that matter in sport. However, I am sure that the spirit of Paul will remain with us, even in the sport struggles that still have to go on today. And we cherish all that he did and gave in all aspects of his life to the people of South Africa, to the legal profession, to arts, culture, and to sport. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Rich. Um, and thanks for that uh, picture of, of uh, the wider picture of Paul's, Paul's life. Um, we have a message from the Tonga Child and Family Welfare Society, which says, we at Tonga Child Welfare will always remem remember the highly committed and selfless leader who has inspired many a young community and political activist. 
his humbleness and dedication to the less fortunate community were his strong points, which was so admired by many, even those that he opposed. And uh, this message uh, is, is from the um, Child Welfare Society in Tongat, and the secretary has signed it. Um, comrades, we now have a video clip of Paul's arrest at the British consulate. Uh, many speakers have spoken of it. Well, you can see it. Well, you can see that um, he was, uh, that's a much younger Paul and uh, taking on the might of the uh, apartheid police together with many other comrades, some of whom have passed on. We see there comrade Billy Naya, comrade Yunus Mohammed, a very young Swaminathan Gaundan, Terra Lakota, um, and I'm not sure, um, uh, I can't remember all of them were there. I think I saw comrade Zach Yakub as well. Um, and and um, as you will see on the screen, they, um, when they were taken into the consulate, they became very famous as the consulate six. However, as speaker after speaker has said, that is not the only contribution that Comrade Paul um, has made to the struggle. Our next speaker is Jerry Covadia, um, a comrade of Paul's from the Italian Indian Congress and the United Democratic Front. Jerry. to unmute. Alvin assisted earlier on. Okay, I'm trying to unmute him. Give us, give us I have unmuted now. Okay. Maggie, okay. Oh, good, you can go ahead. She wants to mute. Go okay. ahead, Jerry. Go ahead, uh, Professor. Okay, sorry. So I'll be very brief because much of what I wanted to say has been covered, but I want to shine the spotlight on about three or four issues that I think are critical to the contributions that Paul has made. One of which, and maybe the first and most important is I will miss him. I will miss him in fighting the struggles for good health because unfortunately our health system is uh, commercially organized it's insufficiently um, equivalent for all people and it's insufficient. So we need people with like Paul's love and attention and vigor for sports and other things in the health sector. So for that, I miss him very much. But I've been with Paul from the beginning and I, I had the most highest respect for him as an individual and for the things he did. The first thing I remember, and I wanted to consider, is that Paul came up through various struggles in my own university, through the UDF, the Release Mandela campaign, through the ANC, and through the SRCs. So that was his sort of learning ground. 
And that's the first point. The second point is that um, there's a picture of Paul. It came from the archives and it tells the story of a man by the way he, he poses on the steps. It may be the university or maybe the city, but he poses in a way, not in a negative way, in a positive way with his hands folded, looking at the world, defying it to oppress him and defying him to defying uh, the world to prevent Paul from achieving his aims. That's what the picture tells me. He's also, he also looks like a person who's not afraid to tackle the hardest of political issues, to cross the hard, most difficult of political barriers. So that's the other point. The next thing I wanted to say was that he's been involved in those uh, treason trials, which are known as the Peter Marisburg treason trials in 1956. And he was involved with Mewa, Isop Jasset, Archie Gomede, and there may be others. There was another trial again, uh, where he showed remarkable courage and foresight. And that was with 16 members of the UDF in 1985. It was also called the PMB uh, treason trial. So those are the pictures I, I have of Paul. He was a most unusual individual. All my life when I was working with him, I was struck by the fact that this poor guy is suffering all the time. He never overcame his physical disabilities and yet it didn't affect the humor in the man, the physical activity of the man and the intellectual contributions of the man. It's quite a unique contribution because I know from my own experiences with my patients and myself that disease and health, ill health can really depress an individual. But Paul went through that, sailed through all of those and came out stronger at the other end. So I want, I want to pay my respects to him as an individual, as a friend, as a fighter for freedom, and as, an, as a person who never gave up on the struggle. I think people have already alluded to the fact that we have lost out so much that at the moment, we have a quality of some political cohorts who, who uh, deny the existence of Paul and who disgrace the ANC's bitter people. So let me say to them that the, the people now require to be energized, to come forward and fight again. And we need people like Paul and individuals like that to take them forward. I will remember Paul always. He had a unique sense of humor. He enjoyed life to the full. And I could never get over the fact that here's this poor chap. He's got the hypertension and he's got other problems. And yet he exudes an, an enthusiasm for life that very few people who are healthy in the, in the fully can do. So Paul, you have my, my utmost um, admiration and you have my wishes for the best possible afterlife if there is one for you to participate in. I will miss you. Our the NIC will miss, miss you and the country will miss you. The last thing I want to say is that Paul rightly held the, the occupation of the British consulate as a rather seminal episode in his life. And the more I thought about it, the more I realized what an imaginative exercise that was. It really captured the attention of the world. It uh, showed up some of the British trays, which are pretty grim and some colonial trays, which are awful. But anyway, the occupation of the British consulate also showed very many positive points. So, Paul, thank you for that. Thank you for the other gifts you've given us. And the, the country, the people will always remember what you have done. I certainly will. And I'm sure 
that my family and the people I work with and live with will all remember Paul David and the great things he did. So go well, Paul. Thank you, Jerry. I think um, what we are getting here is a very, very rich picture of, uh, of Paul's life and one that indeed must be celebrated. <clears throat> we must also remember that Paul had a very good singing voice. Mm -hmm. um, on, yes. Our next speaker is um, Lechisa Tsenoli. Um, originally, um, no longer here working here in KZN, but uh, from here, he has uh, worked here in KwaZulu Natal extensively in the civic movement, um, uh, worked closely with Paul as a part of the cohort from Le Monde together with people like Jabo Stole um, and others. And uh, he was part of the UDF, the, the civics, as I've said, and a comrade of Paul's. The Chisa. Uh, thank you very much, Maggie. And um, let me start by passing on greetings to the family and condolences for the loss of Paul. Uh, many years ago, Chiniwe Achebe, wheelchair bound, came to South Africa to deliver the uh, a memorial lecture uh, for Steve Biko. And he related a story of um, his son who was with him on that day, but when he was young, hearing on the death of Christopher Akigbo during the Biafran war, his son saying, because he had gotten to love him, he said, please dad, do not let him die. I think it is inappropriate for us to say that of Paul. Let him not die. Uh, he's gone physically, but I think the things he represents and the fragments that has come out of today's uh, so far uh, remarks uh, demonstrate the breadth, the depth, and the quality of the man himself and are worth keeping alive for posterity. It is our responsibility, therefore, not to forget his contributions. What I remember most about Paul every time, uh, it's Judge uh, Tomba who says perhaps uh, the story of his sense of humor may not come up, but it has come up. In meetings, it, is, it would be his voice that I hear the loudest laughing at some corner over there and so on, I would know Paul is around. Uh, but that did not, uh, from my own observation of Paul, being a very intense uh, revolutionary in many respects. So he was almost always driven. Uh, and this is what I remember most about him. In our period, uh, when we started work around in the, at least myself, in the late uh, 70s in Durban and early 80s, uh, was his presence amongst other comrades, some of them present here today, and others who are not, in bridging the divides between our communities. Uh, Paul was active. His practical work across different communities, helping us from down south in the, in the Deben functional area to the north of the, of the Deben area uh, to have us meeting together to cross boundaries uh, that apartheid constructed. But uh, it was fascinating to work with him uh, from uh, the team of activists that he was always working with uh, to link us up with others across that we didn't know ourselves. So it was glad that we had those opportunities. But perhaps the uh, issue about Paul is the period that he dies. It's a very sad period. Not only even as it was a pleasure to be with him when he celebrated his 75th year in Phoenix, it was absolutely great, uh, huge nostalgic and uh, memories of our struggles together. 
But it was also said already then that the 10 uh, things we're taking in our country and what we needed to do about it. Uh, yet, even as uh, it has been said here, we needed in a bad way uh, to find things that are concrete and not to allow the difficulties that were emerging, even at that time, to disillusion us. Especially because we were told in advance by others who were there before us that the period of governance is going to be the most difficult. If you think the struggle was going to be difficult, it was Paul and comrades uh, of his seniority who kept advising us, the younger ones, that you must be careful that you do not get dissolutions by what's happening now. It has happened elsewhere. We must find ways around those problems and be creative enough to at least provide ways to handle the problems that we're confronting. I agree that uh, perhaps the, the intensity of his revolutionary spirit, his dedication and commitment will continue to inspire us. But we mustn't allow it to be what we say, but I can already hear practical things that must come out of what we are saying about him today. It has to be said that uh, the uh, area of arts culture, as indicated earlier on, unfortunately uh, have suffered neglect. There's a thankful development of reviving those. This offers us an opportunity and a platform to talk about Paul and the arts in a way that will add to that revival of this aspect of the struggle broadly in our country to fulfill the many dimensions of people's lives and their pursuit of changes that are profound, that are non-racial, that, that cut across gender, that becomes meaningful to their lives. I think his life presents us with an opportunity to build that profile uh, of from someone who we can relate to. We do not have to depend on anybody else to write that story. Those of us we work, who work with him, such as are gathered hard today, must take those initial steps to build together an appropriate uh, story. Uh, Brecht was perhaps thinking about Paul David when he said, there are many who fight for 10 years and that's okay. And then there are those who fight for 20 years. That's okay still. But then there are those who fight for a lifetime. Those we cannot do without. It is the inspiration of that. The observation, the anticipation that things will be difficult and others will fall by the wayside. They'll give up. But that's okay, it is understood, things can be tough. But then there are those who do it for a lifetime. Paul David's life offers us that story. And it's a wonderful story to keep alive and to provide motivation and inspiration for us to see that it is doable. I'm glad to have been able to be present here and be invited to, to say a word or two. Often we are not able to be present when this uh, bidding farewell to comrades we have worked with are done. But that uh, this was possible, I'm really grateful to the organizers and the family uh, so that we continue the important work that Paul uh, has been involved in. Two things. In the 60s to the 70s, Raymond Satna has told us and written some fragments of what happened by way of the struggle uh, during that period. The life of Paul is a classic example that must be told uh, amongst those stories of struggle during that period that has not been told. So I recommend it strongly as a reason for us to gather uh, fragments, uh, even as they are, because he is not here to compliment them uh, of his life during that period, to close gaps that might be there and continue to offer inspiration. We really wish his family well, 
uh, to cope with the uh, trauma of losing a loved one such as him. And we hope we can play, we can continue to play a supportive role uh, to their life as they go around. His legacy must not uh, be allowed to die. Thank you very much, uh, Mati. Thanks very much, Lichisa. Um, comrades, you'll notice that we aren't using titles of people because um, this is Paul's memorial tribute and this is how he knew everyone. Um, there wasn't a, a distinction about, you know, whether you're a high up or, uh, or an ordinary person. So that is what we are doing. Um, I just want to briefly read out an excerpt um, of a message from his nephew, Bak Sakti's son, who says, to me, Deva was a wonderful, caring, kind, com compassionate and playful man. He treated both me and Louis the same from when we were kids to the last time we saw him last year. He was also a father to my mom, something for which I'm endlessly grateful. Um, and then I, I, I'm, I'm just taking out a bit here. Every second spent with Deva was one worth cherishing him. Um, last year, August, I asked Dev what his biggest regret in his life was. I prefer to ask the tough questions. He told me I wish I could ask him many other questions. And he says, um, he, anyway, I am glad he is at peace. He struggled in life, let him rest now. I am glad that he's welcomed in the heavens by his siblings, his parents, his late ex-wife and his friends and comrades. I'll see you when I see you, Deva. Your name lives proudly in me. That is his nephew, Bak, the son of Sakti. Um, our next speaker, um, and before I hand over to our next speaker, let me also say that um, Lichisa, Comrade Lichisa actually um, represents what uh, people like Paul um, grew in us. The whole issue of working together across racial lines, across different areas in common struggles. And uh, in the civic struggle, we're able to build that working with comrades from Amlazi or Clermont or La Montfort. And it's a great legacy that has been left, the building of non-racialism. Um, our next speaker is Comrade Pravin Godan, um, who has worked with Paul across every sector, I think, and I see UDF civic comrade friend. Um, Pravin. Well, good afternoon to everyone, and thank you very much for this opportunity, both to see some of the faces on the screen that I haven't seen for a while, but also to pay uh, tribute to uh, Comrade Paul and to celebrate uh, his life and, and his contributions. And let me firstly convey condolences to the family, uh, Jolene, Jazz, Lisa, Cinti, and Ben, and all the uh, younger people in the David family as, as, as well. Paul in many ways uh, through his life was an anti-colonialist, an anti-apartheid activist, and if you like, an anti-segregationist. But all of us, as uh, many have already said, will remember him by his laughter, his confidence, his eloquence, his commanding presence. And I suppose he was an activist's activist, uh, supremely confident at all times and giving off almost six decades of his life to uh, the struggle, but also to democracy and the way in which we have South Africa uh, today. But Paul was by no means an individual. He always recognized that he was part of a team. He was part of a collective, whether it is within a civic movement in the NIC, in the UDF, uh, but also working with comrades and helping comrades in the underground of the ANC. And as many have pointed out, he was a giant figure, uh, largely unrecognized nationally, as many of you have, have said, which is a great pity, but one whose uh, life and work straddled uh, the Natal Indian Congress, the African National Congress, the UDF, the Release Mandela campaigns, uh, the civic uh, movements in the Durban Housing Action Committee, and similar organizations in the Western Cape and Soweto, his legal uh, prowess, his uh, contribution to non-racial sport, uh, all, of our, all of that uh, is a clear indication of the breadth of his contribution uh, in his uh, almost 80 years of life. People like myself will remember him for, and his late wife Ursula for the lovely uh, Christmas lunches 
the two large dogs that he always had at his Verulam property, and uh, the music, the laughter, and the dance that actually accompanied uh, the sessions uh, that we used to have at, at, at his house. I want to paint firstly, very quickly, a, a picture of the decades in which some of the key activities in our history took place. The 1960s clearly was a period that is characterized by imprisonment in, on Robben Island and the kind of assistance that his late sister Phyllis and others gave to uh, families that wanted to see uh, those of their family that were locked up in Robben Island. It was also a fearful period. Uh, in one of those pictures that you showed on, on the screen, uh, and the person who uh, gave the chart sheet, so to speak, to Paul uh, outside the British consulate in Field Street, uh, I remember very well through my detentions, which is a chap, but probably at that stage was a Lieutenant De Beer, big muscles, a fearsome chap, and you can see Paul smiling at him, the, it, almost saying to him, do what you like, my friend, but you can never intimidate us. And that's the spirit that in many ways uh, pervaded Paul's life. The 1970s, Paul became very consciously a part, like Jerry and others, uh, of the Natal Indian Congress, not because it was the Natal Indian Congress, but because it was the sole member of the Congress Alliance that was not banned in the 1960s. And uh, it was the beginning of raising the, uh, the flag of the Freedom Charter once again inside the country uh, with Prema and others uh, in about 1974, he will remember the late Yunus Muhammad uh, was our link person with the then Transvaal and a Human Rights Day was organized as the beginning of political activity openly in addition to what the Black Consciousness Movement did at that particular time. But the 70s was characterized by the student revolt in Soweto, uh, the opposition to apartheid structures like the local affairs committees, uh, work in the underground of the ANC, and the transformation of the Natal Indian Congress from a committee that met in lawyers' offices to one that began to recruit activists from UDW and elsewhere and became a more community-based organization and as you and Lachisa have pointed out, Maggie, one that quietly built non-racial bonds uh, between different areas in, in KZN. The 1980s was uh, almost covering like many decades in one decade. Um, and what comes to mind is, is the meeting that took place at Orient Hall, where a number of activists who were outside City Hall protesting against PW Botha's presence with Rajvansi uh, inside City Hall and, and a couple of hundred activists outside who were locked out, uh, or rather locked up for a few hours. And almost instantaneously, you had thousands attending this meeting at Orient Hall. And Paul, uh, as you said, was this commanding figure on the stage uh, that managed that meeting with absolute aplomb. But the 80s was the period of mass struggles, uh, typified by student uprisings, women's organizations being formed, trade unions uh, becoming stronger, particularly the Food and Allied Workers Union that had just uh, accomplished much uh, and suffered much uh, because of the Wilson Roundtree strike that the Chisa and others I'm sure will remember as well. The formation of the Release Mandela campaign uh, in Griffiths and Tenge's office in Victoria Street, Durban. I don't know, I think it's still called Victoria Street. And uh, Griffiths, of course, a few years later, being murdered brutally uh, by the apartheid police. And the opposition to the South African Indian Council and the tricameral parliament and the Kurunov bills, which laid the basis for the United Democratic Movement being formed. And of course, the famous consulate uh, saga that followed and the treason trial that followed as, 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 as well. More recently, even as late as 2017, Paul was galvanizing people in Kwaduguza, Stoke Stanga, against the sports complex being taken over by a well-to-do uh, property developer. I'm not sure what happened eventually, but a mass meeting was organized in, in, in Kwaduguza to oppose what was actually going on. But what does all this mean? It means that Paul was a master uh, in many ways of what we in those days called organizing, 
conscientizing, mobilizing, and engaging in mass struggles, which in many different forms took place across KZN and later across the country as well. Secondly, he understood that for all of this to be accomplished, there has to be sacrifice, and that sacrifice can't be compromised by greed as it is today. And let us be frank that greed is the driver of the corruption that we see in political organizations, in government, outside of government, and in the business sector as, as well. Paul was, as many of you have already mentioned, brave and gutsy. Uh, there's no other words for that. He uh, would do whatever is necessary, including going to detention uh, several times and facing the consequences of the apartheid uh, regime's might and uh, being none uh, they're afraid uh, for that. But above all, he was a leadership figure, one who could relate, as many of you have pointed out, to many generations uh, across the board, his contemporaries from the 1950s, to the students that were mobilized in the 1980s, to the younger people even today as well. And perhaps the kind of tribute that we, we need to pay to him and to many other fallen heroes is that in every one of our communities, and this is not my idea, it's an idea from another activist, uh, we should, as, either in the di digital form or in some other form once the COVID virus is, pandemic is over, organize community celebrations of their lives so that younger generations and so-called non-political people can actually appreciate the kind of sacrifices and contributions that people like Paul have made and many others have made as well. In the past few weeks, the liberation movement has say, said farewell to three heroes. Tata Mlangeni, who comes from a different kind of background and made a different kind of contribution, but remains uh, uh, an example of what is good in the Congress movement and the kind of values that need to be promoted uh, even today. John and Karimeng, who are trade unionists to the core, uh, who was in exile and, and served in Saktu, uh, and, and who re recently passed away and was laid to rest as well. And now we say farewell uh, to, to Paul David. Finally, uh, it is true that all of us need to find the courage, even in a democracy, To say, even in organizations that we belong to, uh, that we disagree with the wrong things that are actually happening and not be afraid to actually say so. We must continue to promote the values of integrity that people like Paul David embodied and to make sure that in some form or the other, we begin to redefine what principal politics means, even if it means that politics is your career. There must be a level of principle that actually guides that. And above all, let us not forget that the after effects of state capture are still with us, whether in the Zondo Commission or in the various institutions uh, of the state and outside of the state as, as well. And in that sense, this kind of mobilization uh, that this event and rather unfortunate event brings about is the kind of mobilization that needs to continue if we are to meet the aspirations that we set out in the South African constitution. And finally, I'm sure Paul will say to all of us, as Amelka Cabral said, claim no easy victories and tell no lies. And his life has certainly been a testament uh, to that. Hamagash there, Paul David. Thank you very much, Comrade Praveen. Um, I think you have covered a whole range of the areas um, which, which Paul uh, was active in. You know, you spoke about the, the Wilson Roundtree's boycott. And I remember at the time that we could not make the call for a boycott. So people went around saying things like, and wearing, you know, t-shirts and um, having stickers which said, I do not buy Wilson Roundtree's. And uh, also, I remember a particular cutting one was, um, we don't buy mint imperialists. So those were the creative means used at the time. And Paul was part of that. Um, I have a message here from the, uh, the Mir Bank Justice Network, and I'm just going to, uh, it's a long message, I'm just going to pull out a part of it, which I think would, would 
uh, also show us uh, a part of Paul, which others have spoken about his love for reading and how he sought to actually get that uh, amongst others. And they say here, um, it is common knowledge that Comrade Paul was an avid and prodigious reader. We in Mere Bank are indeed fortunate and considered a major coup when Paul, Comrade Paul donated his book collection to the Krishna Rabi Lal Foundation's library project. Many of these books have been autographed by the authors and other senior struggle personalities. It shows you the unselfishness of the Comrade and the willingness to share. Um, they say the flags of MJN and the revolutionary movement fly at half mast as we bid farewell to one of our very best servant leaders of our generation. So that's from the Mere Bank Justice Network. Let me now hand over to um, Frank Chikani, um, who was Paul's UDF uh, co-trialist in the treason trial that others have spoken of. You can see in the, the picture being flighted, uh, a very much younger Frank Chikani, and uh, he will share his memories with us. Comrade Frank. Well, thank you very much. Um, I just want to start by expressing my condolences to the family of Comrade Paul David, friends, uh, comrades, and the country that has lost a great fighter for the liberation struggle. I must say that uh, now, because I'm speaking last, I've been assisted not to repeat what others have said. And so I'm going to say that I came to know Comrade uh, Paul David more closely during the days of the United Democratic Front. I would have known about him and seen him in other contexts, but the United Democratic Front brought us together especially during the treason trial, which got to be known as the Peter Marisbeck treason trial. Uh, of the 16 uh, treason trial lists, 12 of them were said to have been part of the ANC underground. And he was considered as part of those who were the ANC underground. And, and therefore um, would actually have got the longest sentence if we ever completed that trial, and I'll come back to that. And so I'm no more going to repeat what comrades have said, an anti-apartheid lawyer of excellence, political activist, grassroots struggles um, of the people against unjust laws, racism, discriminatory laws, systems, and policies. He also was a civic and political activist and comrades have spoken about that. But there is one thing I want to say that he deployed his education talents and resources as I, I read in the history of his life uh, to the advancement of the cause of all South Africans. And I emphasize the word all South Africans irrespective of color, race, or creed. And, and so he actually was extraordinary, part of a generation that was extraordinary. I, I was tempted to talk about our experience in the treason trial, and I'm not going to be tempted to go through the details. We were arrested the way we were arrested, the detention in Durban, where we were put in one cell and Mama Sisulu was kept in a separate cell because she was the only woman amongst us. We had the privilege of being together, sleeping on the floor together, talking about politics, strategizing about what we needed to do. But unfortunately, we couldn't uh, engage Mama Sisulu. But the disadvantage about being in that cell is that it was an open cell with open toilets and open showers. And so you, the first few days you feel very uncomfortable. And as days went by, we realized this is our life. This is where we are. And there was also the diversity of the people who were in that cell. Actually, people don't realize that. I mean, high professional people, lawyers, 
medical doctors, mathematicians. We had every mix in that cell, different religions, people praying in the cell at different times, and, and we became part of it, trade unionists um, and various other people. Uh, we had a great time with a, a chef in the prison who decided you'll cook for these leaders a better meal than any other meal he has prepared during um, prison. But we also had an, an Indian meal once a day. Communities in, in the Devon area cooked meals for us every day. But I think during the prison trial, what was one thing that made us entertained is made to be made to listen to our speeches, which were the basis for our charges. And we used to laugh at each other and how we got ourselves into trouble. And I must say that about that prison trial, um, as opposed to the Delmas trial, because we were detained for similar things, um, Ishmael Mahomet, who was our senior counsel, said, if this trial went to an end, you will go to jail for a long time because in any way you broke the laws of apartheid. Uh, and so I'm going to make sure this trial never comes to an end and never starts. Actually, he made sure that trial never started until we were acquitted. He had a reason to keep the judge busy every day. And so I would like to really focus on what the UDF meant and represented, which is what I would like to end with. The UDF stood uh, for the opposite of what that apartheid society was about. And it was a radical antithesis of it, and therefore became a problem to the apartheid system. It represented the type of society we struggled for, sacrificial, um, sacrificed our lives for, and many gave their lives for. It is also a representation of the birth of the tradition of the movement. What Kabwe decided at the Kabwe conference, you'll remember that the African National Congress started as an, for Africans in the narrow sense of the word, and therefore only opened in Kabwe in 1975, where all revolutionaries who accepted the program and policies of the ANC respective of color or race would be part of the movement. And the best representation of that decision was the United Democratic Front. In all the rallies we went to throughout the country, the participation, the leadership, the various communities, represented this tradition of non-racialism, which I saw being reflected in the memorial uh, piece that has been uh, present, prepared for our comrade Paul David. And it also represented that tradition of self-service, selfless service, sacrifice for other people. And, and, and all the people we are talking about here really made great sacrifices and he's one of them. And I just want to say, unfortunately, that particular tradition and history represents also just the opposite of what we are today. Uh, we, 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 we not the, the society we struggled for. We note the, the nation we struggled for. We wanted to have a non-racial society where everybody lives in peace and a better life for all. But no, even our own movement has gone back beyond Kabwe and is no more representative of the people. If you go to the branches, if you go to the meetings, you actually realize that we have just gone back before Kabwe rather than after Kabwe. We are, we are trapped in a society where of such inequalities, where leaders rob the nation and the poor of what they should have, 
corrupt to the core. I actually am surprised that we had these comrades with us all this time who do the things that they are doing. And so we have a huge challenge um, uh, for people like comrade Paul David. He is gone, but we are still here. And the best gift we can give him is to challenge what's happening now and make sure we change the trajectory of where our movement and the country is going to, to where we wanted to take it to. And this is going to require unconventional methods of doing it, where you have to challenge your own comrades, your own, uh, the people you are in the trenches with, who are now behaving in a completely different way. For me, the passing away of comrade Paul David tells me that we have a greater responsibility than we ever thought. And the generation of now cannot fail people like him, Langenis, Solo, Mandela, uh, Owar Tambo. We cannot fail. And so I would call on the nation based on the legacy of the leaders who are leaving us, that we tighten our bootstraps, go to the streets and say no to what is happening now. And I can assure you, the people of this country will take on this monster that we are facing. And I want to say this in tribute to our comrade, Paul David, Lala Ngotolo, uh, rest in peace. Thank you, Comrade Frank, for, for indeed spoken words of truth. Um, comrades, we are now um, at the end of the program. Um, there is much that has been said, and there is, I think, much soul searching to be done amongst us as well to honor the legacy of Comrade Paul David. Um, we would like to, uh, on behalf of the Paul David Memorial Committee, we would like to firstly thank the family of Paul for sharing his life with us, but for also participating um, in this memorial tribute to Paul. We would like to thank all the organizations, individuals from around the country, outside the country, um, far and wide, different parts of the country who have participated um, in the program today, who have uh, been part of the uh, uh, watching the live stream, uh, we would like to thank the 1860 um, Heritage Center and Salvin Naidu in particular for the support that he has given us uh, with all the technical uh, assistance and the advice in how uh, we, we presented the videos and other such things. Thank you very much, Salvin. And we'd like to thank the speakers today who at very short notice made themselves available, I suppose um, you had little choice. The legacy of Comrade Paul would have demanded nothing else, but true to um, how you were groomed in the struggle, you actually rose to the occasion. Thank you very much. And then um, the very final words as we close is to say that the challenge that has been put to all of us here today is very clear. Pick up the spear that has been thrown by Comrade Paul. We need to challenge what is wrong in our movement, in our country, and we need to support what is right. And that is, I think, what we need to leave this memorial tribute with Comrade Paul. And that is the best uh, way of uh, remembering his legacy and honoring it. So thank you very, very much, comrades. Go well.
Oh, 